thank you to design this t-shirt for me you know who you are i know you don't want me to promote your twitter for you but you know i really want to say thank you right and i will also show you guys the back okay let me ask you guys this are you guys tired of this kind of questions that they just switch the base and then the exponent and they ask you which one's bigger in this situation we have 9 to the 10th power and the other one is 10 to the 9th power which one's bigger well, let me tell you guys, in this situation, the answer is 9 to the 10th power. And now, how did I figure that out so fast? Let me tell you, I have a secret. And today, I will share the secret with you guys. I will first make my claim, and I'll prove the claim for you guys. So check this out. Let me write this down right here for you guys. First, we have two numbers to consider, and let me just call them to be A and B. And let me just assume that A is a smaller one, because I don't want A and B to be equal. And this is a special case, right? So I will just tell you, if today you have two numbers, and uh, again, A is less than B, but you also have to make sure that they are both greater than or equal to E. But because B is bigger than A, well, B is not the same as E, okay? A can be E, but B cannot be E, or that situation. So that's my little assumption. If you have this, then I will tell you, whenever you have this, I will say A, to the b's power versus b to the a's power where I just switched the base and then the exponent a is closer to e than b, right? in this case a to the b is bigger than b to the a like that and I know this is not a good inequality symbol let me just write it down better now this is better so this is my claim and as you can see of course 9 and 10 they are both bigger than e and in this case 9 is closer to e than 10 so I knew this right here is bigger. It took me only 0.5 seconds or maybe even less. Well, well, I will show you guys how to prove this. But first of all, look at, we have a to the b's power. I don't want to have two variables on one side. That's no good because I want to come with a function so we can do calculus. And you kick calculus in the, its head, you know? Hmm, it's okay. It's not a bad thing here. It's an easy fix because I can just raise both sides to the one over a b power. So that I can bring the B here and then bring the A there. And remember, when you raise both sides to a power, and of course, this is just a positive power, it's increasing. So you can keep the inequality. With that being said, once you do that, this is equivalent to say A. And of course, you can just cancel things out. You get 1 over A's power. And again, you can keep the inequality. And then this right here will be B to the 1 over B's power. And now, when you have this right here, you can consider a function where, of course, we'll just take this to be x to the 1 over x power, and it will make a comparison. So here we go. This is my little proof. I will consider the function to be y equals x to the 1 over x power. And because we're talking about inequalities, why don't we look at the minimum or the maximum of this function? And yes, I have done this right here before. But today, I will show you guys how to differentiate this the Superman way. You are kicking the calculus in its head. So, do the following. First, let me just write down the derivative right here, y prime. Well, as you can see, the base right here is x. And then the power right here is 1 over x. This is not like a power function. This is also not like an exponential function. It's kind of like a both, isn't it? So, why don't we do both for the derivative? Remember, when you have a power function, you can do the power rule. Therefore, I'm going to first assume that this power is just like a constant. I just treat this as a constant first. Imagine you have 7 right here. Now, in that case, how do you differentiate x to the 7th power? Well, you just have to bring this down in the front and then minus 1. That's it, right? Because you're looking at this as a constant. So you end up with 1 over x times x to the 1 over x minus 1. Done deal. For the first part you also have to do the other part now i'm going to treat this base as a constant and i'm going to add the result right here with the previous result i'm treating this base as a constant and you have to remember this is just like when you're differentiating e to the some power first this is going to repeat itself so x to the one over x but you multiply by ln of y by the base well not we didn't have e, so we have to multiply by l and x. Okay, and one more thing. Don't forget the chain rule. Because 
x right here is the constant that we're treating. 1 over x is still a function, so we have to use the chain rule for that. The derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. And we are done for the derivative. Yeah, this is so cool, right? And of course, you can also check out my other videos for the traditional way to do this, but I will leave that to you. And now, let's clean things up. First, we see that we have the minus 1 for the exponent, and the base right here was x. So I can look at this as 1 over x, and x to a negative 1, of course, that will be the same as 1 over x. And then we have the x to the 1 over x power. And then this right here we add, and perhaps I will just write this down as how it is, because I will factor it out in the next line. So, from here, as we can see, both of them have this, and both of them have the x squared in the denominator. I will take that outside. So I will put this down on the top, x to the 1 over x, over x squared in the denominator, and I open the parentheses. For this term, we'll just have 1 left. For this term, we have minus, and then natural log of x left, like this. And of course, we want to find the critical numbers, so we are going to set this to be 0. This is never 0, so the only hope is right here. In order to get 0 right here, x has to be e. So the only critical number is when x equals e. That's why the criteria is at e right here. Well, well, let's see if we get a minimum or maximum right here. And to do so, we can just do a first derivative test. So this is the first derivative sign chart, or sign number line, whatever you want to call it. Let me make a mark right here, that's e. Pick a number less than e, let's say 1, and put it in here. This is always positive, 1 minus ln 1, which is 1 minus 0, is positive. And then pick a number bigger than e, let's say e to the second power, this is always positive, e minus e to the second power. 1 minus ln e to the second power is 1 minus 2, it's negative. First derivative goes from positive to negative, so that means what? This right here, we have a local maximum, but this is the only local maximum. So in fact, this is also the absolute maximum. So let me just tell you guys, we have an absolute maximum right here when x is equal to e. So what are we talking about? Remember, when you have the absolute maximum at e, that means if you're putting e in this function, e to the 1 over e, that's going to be the biggest among any other number in this form. So I will actually show you guys the graph right here because that will be the easiest way for me to demonstrate my point. When you graph x to the 1 over x power, first of all, again, check out my other videos for this. You cannot plug in exactly 0 for x, otherwise you get 1 over exactly 0, that's undefined. But you can talk about limits. So, if you talk about limit, when x is approaching 0, you end up with y value approaching 0 as well, alright? And then, of course, the maximum is at e, let me just put down e right here. Putting e here, you get e to the 1 over e, so let me just write it down here. And then, from 0 to e, the function is increasing, because you have first derivative being positive, so you just go up right here. And if it's like, I'm not going to do a second derivative, seriously, right? Please don't make me do the second derivative or that. Yeah. Anyway, this is the maximum, and after that, the function becomes decreasing like this. However, though, when x is approaching past the infinity, you have the limit being 1. So you have a horizontal asymptote at, x, at y equal to 1. And again, you just pretty much do this right here. It's decreasing. Anyway, here's the point. This right here is the absolute max. And let's go back to this right here. I am assuming both of them are greater than e. And of course, I'm saying a can be exactly e, okay? So I'm looking at a and b being on this side. And let me just make a mark right here. Let's say a is right here, and b is right here. So you have this point here and this point here. This point is precisely a to the 1 over a power. And then this point is b to the 1 over b's power. And because, as you can see, this is higher than that, because on this portion of the graph, this is a decreasing part. So, this right here is actually bigger than you can see it from the graph. Therefore, you can conclude that a to the 1 over a is bigger than b to the 1 over b, 
or equivalently speaking from this picture, you can raise both sides to the AB power and you end up with A to the B's power greater than B to the A's power. Very, very cool, right? So as you can see, we have this right here. That's how we were able to do this. It's within like, you know, split of a second. And when you know that, you can do a lot of similar questions within like 0.2 second or so. So I will just give you guys another example if you guys would like. Let's say we have four to the, I don't know, eighth power versus a to the fourth power. This right here, the four is smaller than eight and the four is closer to e, so this is bigger. And of course you can do a lot more. Let's say you have 2018 to the 2020. Yeah, I'm not doing 2019. Versus 2020 to the 2018. Yes, this right here will be bigger, right? I know I also put a bigger one on the left hand side. I don't know why, but like whatever. That's just how it is. And I know what you guys are going to ask me, so I will ask you guys that question before you guys even ask me. What if one of the number is on the other side? I know, I know. So I will ask you guys this question before you guys go. Suppose you have let's say two point five which is less than e, right? And let's say we have then another number 3. 2.5 to the third power versus 3 to the 2.5 power. In this case, which one is bigger? And let me be extremely honest with you guys. I don't know. Uh, a and B have to be on the same side in order for this kind of method to work out nicely. If both A and B are on the same side right here, that's also just as easy. You can look at the graph, but I just show you guys the situation when both of the numbers are greater than E, and A can be E as well. But if one of the numbers is right here, then such as this one, I don't know. So if you guys know how to do this question, in fact, Leave a comment down below and let me know, share with it. Of course, please do not say, let's just use the calculator because otherwise, where is the fun, right? So this is it. Hopefully you like this video. And if you do, please give me a like. And also, if you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe. So good. By the way, I designed the back and then he designed the front for me. Yeah, anyway, this is it.